Welcome to our channel Dark Destinations, where it is our mission to take you on shadowed adventures featuring dark entities and spooky tales of the past and present. Today we will be visiting the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Without further delay let's jump into today's paranormal odyssey and see what we find looming in this dark destination. Imagine a place where over 63,000 lives were claimed by the White Death, also known as tuberculosis. A place shrouded in mystery, draped in history and steeped in fear. That place is none other than the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Nestled in the heart of Louisville, Kentucky, this sanatorium has earned its reputation as one of the most haunted places in America. A chilling testament to the ravages of disease and human suffering, it's a building that has witnessed more than its fair share of death and despair. But it's not just the staggering number of deaths that makes Waverly Hills so infamous. It's the eerie tales of paranormal activity, the reported sightings of spectral figures and the unsettling whispers in the dark that have etched this sanatorium into the annals of American folklore. Welcome to the Waverly Hills Sanatorium, where the walls whisper with the echoes of the past. The year was 1910 when the doors of the Waverly Hills Sanatorium first opened. Nestled atop a scenic hill in Louisville, Kentucky, this sprawling Gothic structure was initially conceived as a beacon of hope a refuge for those stricken by the white plague tuberculosis. This formidable disease had cast a long and ominous shadow over the early 20th century, indiscriminately claiming lives and leaving communities in despair. The need for a specialized institution to combat this plague was dire, and thus the Waverly Hills Sanatorium was born. The sanatorium was no ordinary hospital. It was a self-contained community designed to house and treat hundreds of patients. It had its own farm, water treatment facility, and post office. Everything was aimed at making the patients' lives as normal as possible while they fought the debilitating disease. The early days of the sanatorium were marked by optimism and progress. Cutting-edge techniques and treatments were employed, giving patients a fighting chance against the formidable foe that was tuberculosis. But as the years rolled on, the sanatorium's noble intentions were overshadowed by the sheer scale of the disease it was battling. The burgeoning patient population and the relentless nature of the disease began to strain the sanatorium's resources. Overcrowding became an issue, and the once hopeful atmosphere started to take a darker turn. Despite the best efforts of the dedicated staff, the sanatorium was slowly turning into a grim battlefield where life and death were locked in a constant struggle. The sanatorium became a self-contained city of the sick, isolated from the world. It was a place where laughter was replaced by coughs, and hope was often overshadowed by fear. The once vibrant hallways now echoed with the whispers of despair, and the silent prayers for mercy. But as the doors of the sanatorium opened, so did a gateway to countless tales of horror and despair. The birth of a nightmare had begun, and Waverly Hill Sanatorium was about to etch its name into the annals of the most haunted places in America. As the years passed, Waverly Hills became more than just a sanatorium, it evolved into a haunting abyss of suffering and death. The peak years of this institution were marked by an overwhelming surge in the number of patients. As tuberculosis ravaged the country, the sanatorium's corridors were filled to the brim with the afflicted, their desperate pleas for relief echoing through its stark, eerily silent hallways. The conditions within the sanatorium were nothing short of horrifying. Patients were crammed into overcrowded rooms, their bodies racked by relentless coughs and fevers. The air was thick with despair, the smell of sickness and death lingering in every corner. In an attempt to combat the disease, doctors turned to drastic measures. Experimental treatments, many of them brutal and inhumane, were carried out with a chilling disregard for the patient's well-being. These treatments, more often than not, only served to hasten the patient's journey towards death. As the death toll soared, the sanatorium was faced with a gruesome problem. How to manage the disposal of the deceased without alarming the living? The solution was as macabre as the problem itself. A tunnel, later infamously known as the body chute, was constructed. This underground passageway was used to discreetly slide the bodies of the deceased down the hill, away from the eyes of the patients. The chilling efficiency of this system only served to underscore the grim reality of Waverly Hills. Yet, the world outside remained largely oblivious to the horrors unfolding within the sanatorium's walls. The desperate cries of the dying were drowned out by the sanatorium's carefully maintained facade of hope and healing. The grim reality of Waverly Hills was kept hidden from the world, as the death toll continued to rise. By the mid-20th century, the sanatorium's dark days seemed to be over. 
A beacon of hope shone through the gloom as the discovery of the tuberculosis vaccine brought the world one step closer to eradicating the disease that had once claimed so many lives. The once bustling corridors of Waverly Hills gradually began to empty. The need for the sanatorium was diminishing. The halls that once echoed with the coughs of the afflicted and the footsteps of the diligent nurses were now silent. The number of patients dwindled, and with it, the relevance of this once vital institution. The sanatorium was finally closed in the late 50s, marking the end of an era. Yet, the echoes of the past lingered on. The sanatorium's tale was far from over. In the early 60s it was given a new lease on life, reopening as a geriatric facility. But instead of the sanctuary it once was, it became a breeding ground for further allegations of abuse and neglect. The once haven for the sick transformed into a house of horrors for the elderly. Stories of patients mistreated, neglected and living in squalor began to circulate. Allegations of abuse, both physical and psychological, painted a chilling picture of what life was like within the facility's faded walls. The facility's reputation plummeted, and it wasn't long before it was forced to close its doors once again. This time, it seemed like it might be for good. The sanatorium, once a beacon of hope in the battle against tuberculosis, had fallen from grace. It had become a symbol of the darker side of human nature, a reminder of the horrors that can occur when those in charge lose sight of their duty to care for the vulnerable. But even after its closure, the echoes of the past refused to fade away. The sanatorium's chilling legacy lived on, forever imprinted on the heart of Waverly Hills, a stark reminder of its dark and haunting past. Today, Waverly Hills stands as a chilling reminder of a bygone era. It's a place where the past has refused to die, where the echoes of its melancholy history reverberate through the empty corridors and derelict rooms. The sanatorium may have closed its doors but the stories have never ceased. Over the years Waverly Hills has earned a reputation as a hotspot for paranormal activity. Reports of ghostly sightings and eerie occurrences have been a constant refrain, adding a layer of supernatural intrigue to its already somber narrative. Some believe these spectral entities are the lingering spirits of former patients, still trapped within the sanatorium's imposing walls. One of the most famous ghost stories associated with Waverly Hills involves the specter of a nurse believed to be the spirit of a woman who took her own life within the sanatorium. Her ghostly figure has been reportedly seen wandering the halls, forever bound to the place of her demise. Another well-known tale is that of the shadow people, dark figures often seen lurking in the periphery of one's vision. They are said to dart quickly around corners or scuttle down the long, dilapidated corridors, adding an element of unease to an already chilling atmosphere. Then there's the story of Room 502, a place that has become synonymous with death and despair. Numerous accounts have been shared of a ghostly woman seen crying out in pain, believed to be a patient who died in childbirth. Her cries are said to echo through the hallways, a haunting lullaby from beyond the grave, but perhaps the most chilling of all is the tale of the death tunnel, a grim reminder of the sanatorium's darkest days. It's said that the souls of the countless individuals who were carted down this tunnel are still present, their whispered pleas for mercy forever echoing in the cold, damp air. The question remains, is Waverly Hills Sanatorium haunted by its past, or are these just tales spun from the threads of fear and imagination? The legacy of Waverly Hills is one shrouded in mystery, a chilling testament to the power of the unknown. But there's one mystery that continues to baffle everyone who hears about it. This enigma is the chilling tale of Room 502. It's said that a nurse, overwhelmed by the despair and death surrounding her, took her own life in this very room. Some whisper that she was pregnant, trapped in a scandal that offered no escape. Theories around this unsettling mystery abound. Some believe she was driven to suicide by the sheer hopelessness of her situation. Others suggest she was murdered, her death disguised as a suicide to cover up unspeakable acts. A few even propose supernatural interference, implying that the malevolent entities haunting Waverly Hills drove her to her tragic end. Yet, no matter how many theories are spun, the truth remains elusive. The room itself is silent, offering no clues to the desperate act it once witnessed. So, what really happened in room 502? Nobody knows, and perhaps that's a secret Waverly Hills prefers to keep. Thank you for joining us on this eerie journey into the shadows. We bid you farewell from the depths of darkness. If you've found yourself entangled in the web of horror we've woven, don't escape just yet. Subscribe and brace yourself for more spine-tingling tales. Remember, 
fear has a way of finding you, even in the quietest corners. We encourage you to email your footage and let's keep the fear alive. Until the next haunting encounter beware of what lurks in the darkness. Stay terrified, and may your haunted encounters be our next story. Until next time, sleep with one eye open, and may your dreams be as unsettling as the stories we share. Stay haunted my friends.